Uh, it's time for another math. Easy solution here to discuss further into derivatives of inverse hyperbolic trigonometry. Now look at the deriv derivative of inverse hyperbolic secant of x and show that it's equal to negative 1 divided by x uh, squared, yeah, multiply square root uh, 1 minus x squared. And like always, the beginning of the proof for, this, for these uh, types of functions is first letting y equals 2 inverse hyperbolic secant of uh, x right here. And with inverse functions, this is the same thing as writing basically uh, x is equal to, in, I mean, just regular uh, hyperbolic secant of y right here. So basically we switch x and y, and now we're dealing with this because uh, it's easier than this right here. So this is all that this inverse means. So now we have to solve for y after we switch x and y. So now this one here, we could further simplify this as before we take derivative, derivative because I'll use implicit differentiation soon. So x equals 2, this is by definition 1 divided by cosine, I mean hyperbolic cosine of y. So now if we multiply this, uh, you basically switch these over, move this to the left side and this to the right side, multiply it out. So we get basically hyperbolic cosine of y is equal to 1 divided by x right here. So now we could take the derivative of both sides using implicit differentiation, and we could do this because both sides are equal, and if they're both equal, their derivatives are equal, so we're doing the derivative of the same thing. So we just do this on both sides, which is easier. So now what we could do is solve this left side, that's gonna be now derivative of hyperbolic cosine of y, like I showed in an earlier video. That is just hyperbolic sine of y. But now this is y has a, is a function of x, so we have to use chain rule. So that's going to be y prime, and like always, this y prime just dy over dx right here. So that's what it is. And now basically on the right side, the derivative of this one, using our powerful power rule, this number you could write this as d over dx of x to the power of negative one. And then you see so you bring the negative one using a power rule for derivatives. You see this also in the video link below. And then we multiply this, I mean, we uh, subtract a one from the power, so that's gonna be to the power of negative two, or just x squared, the same thing as putting negative x to the power of negative two, or just bring it down with it like this. So then we have this one right here, solve for this y prime, we get now y prime is equal to negative one over x squared, multiplied by hyperbolic sine of y. So we divide that out, divide this out of there, just extend this. So we have this function here. So now we want to write this one in terms of x. And the way to do that is first using the, like always, hyperbola identity, and which is hyperbolic cosine squared minus hyperbolic sine squared is equal to 1 right here. So we solve for this one right here, this hyperbolic sine of y. Move this over to the right side and then this to the left side. We get basically hyperbolic cosine squared of y. Uh, plus, I mean, I mean, minus one. So minus one is equal to, yeah, equal to, move this to the right side, uh, hyperbolic sine squared of y. So now we squared both sides to get rid of the square root, square out. So we get basically hyperbolic sine of y is equal to plus or minus. You also do have a plus or minus when you square root. And then this is gonna be hyperbolic cosine squared minus one right here. So now, now uh, we're dealing with a plus or minus, but we know that actually in my earlier video, I showed that the function basically y equals to uh, secant inverse hyperbolic secant of x has a domain of basically zero less than x less than equal to one. You see this also in the video link below, uh, which I sh showed how to write this as a logarithm, and, and I show basically that why the domain is such like this. So when we have a domain like this, if you have it in between here, we also the, the range is also uh, greater than zero. Yeah, I'm mean, yeah, greater than equal to zero. This was the range. That's a domain. So when we have this part, and when we look at this right here, if this is greater than zero, then basically hyperbolic sine of y is also greater than uh, zero. Yeah, right here. This is also greater than equal to zero, and you can see this by the definition of what this is, which is just e to the y uh, minus e to the negative y over two. So if this is if this y is always greater than zero, this is gonna be this e to the y's will be higher than this e to the negative y, because remember this is this would be a, a fraction one divided by e to the y, etc. So this will always be greater than or equal to zero. So if it's always greater than or equal to zero, we can't have a negative, so that wouldn't make sense. So we stick to the positive only. 
So we get hyperbolic sine of y is equal to, yeah, equal to square root hyperbolic cosine squared of y minus one. So now we can plug this inside this part right here. Uh, so basically we get y prime, which we know that is equal to negative one over x squared. Yeah, x squared times it by sine of y right here. So plug this in. I'll show you why we're doing that in a bit. So one negative x squared right here. Now we have a square root cosine, hyperbolic cosine squared of y minus one. So now we know what this uh, hyperbolic cosine squared of y is in terms of x. We scroll up from our beginning of the proof. We love, basically this just means x equals uh, this right here, one divided by cosine, hyperbolic cosine of y. We rearrange it to get this part right here, or basically uh, hyperbolic cosine of y equals to uh, one divided by x. That's this part right here. Yeah, and here I'm writing it down again. So uh, hyperbolic cosine of y equals to one divided by x. So now we plug this one here. This is just equal to now uh, one over x squared, because all we're doing is squaring this. So we get finally y prime is equal to uh, negative one over x squared and then square root, uh, all this all divided by, this is gonna be one over x squared, yeah, minus one right here. So we have this one here, we could actually stop here, but the calculus book has it keeps going further. Uh, I, I personally like this one instead of solving it further. But anyways, to get it to look like over here, my calculus book has it, it's pretty straightforward. You first have to multiply this to get the common denominator, or uh, basically, yeah, so here you multiply by x squared over x, over x squared, so we can add them up. So we get y primes equal to negative one over x squared, and now this is this is gonna be one divided by x squared, or one minus x squared over x squared. So we multiply this by x squared. So we replace one by x squared divided by x squared. We have a common denominator right here. So now we get this part over here, and now y prime is equal to negative one over basically now we have uh, x squared right here if we square this one out uh, square root one minus x squared we get this out of the whole square root by squaring it by itself x squared right here so now we like I showed in my earlier video basically this is an absolute value x squared is greater than zero uh, yeah so this is always greater than or equal to zero but uh, so then basically when we square this out we will have, or we square root it out, we'll have an x, but this also has to be greater than zero. So we have to put an absolute value, but in this case our domain is basically zero is less than x, less than one, it's already greater than zero, so we could just leave it, and then x squared divided by x will get y primes equal to negative one over basically x squared over x, one minus x squared, this equals to basically uh, now this is just going to be 1 over 1 over x square root 1 minus x squared this is y prime yeah and basically this is just equal to uh, the same thing as writing d over dx of hyperbolic inverse hyperbolic secant of x right here and this is all yeah we're leaving it at this in my earlier video I had an absolute value for the other uh, derivative of inverse hyperbolic se cosecant of x but that was because the domain was actually, uh, it goes to negative, so you need an absolute value. But since the domain is this right here, you see this also in the video link below, we do not need to put an absolute value here, because otherwise this one has to be greater than zero, so we would need an absolute value, but in this case we don't, so I'll just leave it like this, because the domain is, is already greater than zero, so it can't be negative. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you uh, enjoyed and uh, learned from this video. And remember, you can download these exact notes in the Dropbox link below, as well as watch my earlier videos on uh, related videos in the video description below. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.